I'm Tom Ray, and this is my art podcast. On this episode of the podcast, I get the chance to meet Mandy Bassick Crone. My full time job is that I'm art coordinator for UW Health, but I'm also an artist on the side. Which UW hospital do you curate for? It's for the whole UW Health system, but I'm based at the University Hospital on the west side. My wife and I recently had to go to the UW hospital. One of the ways that I navigate through there is when we get off the elevator, I know to turn right because there's this clay painting there. So is are those the type of things that you're putting up there? Yes. Art is very important for wayfinding. Definitely. There are some pieces at the university hospital that I can never move because they've been there for decades and people just really cling to them as landmarks. <laughs> so. I, I agree. And also too, sometimes there's superstition involved in them. Like we were going there because my wife was, she was going through breast cancer. She's fine now, but there were certain pieces of art where I'd be like, you know, we got some good news. And I'm like, I think it's because I looked at this thing before we went in. So then I'll do things like make a point to look at that every time we go in. So um, that's the first time I've ever heard anyone say that. That's very interesting. Really? The superstitious part. There you go. I just, <laughs> at least that's just me. I might be the only one and everybody else is like, what the hell is he talking about? So how did you get involved in that? I graduated from UW Madison in 2008. I studied art and music. I said yes to everything I possibly could related to art. Took every opportunity I could possibly find related to art and music. And then I was, I was freelancing and saw a career counselor and she suggested volunteering as a way to network or find out about positions I might like. And so I looked up volunteering in Madison and saw that UW Health uh, had an art program and you could volunteer. So I went in and I wound up meeting uh, my predecessor. Uh, she at the time was looking for an assistant. And we just got to chatting and she's like, oh, you sound like you'd be really good for this position. So I kept bugging her um, like every couple of weeks. Is this open? Is this open? Is this open? And I started as an assistant and then I took over the program in 2015. What were you freelancing for when you did that? So majority music. I play the harp. So I did a lot of weddings and events and teaching private lessons, subbing for groups. And then for art, I taught a class for middle schoolers. I did some set design, just anything related to what I am passionate about that I could find. So how do you get started with the harp? Oh, I saw the Nutcracker as a kid and was enthralled by the harp in the Nutcracker. And that's how I started being interested in it. And I grew up in the Milwaukee area and took lessons with a woman in Milwaukee. What age were you? I was seven. And luckily, my parents are very supportive of art, very interested in art, and were really excited about it. You were seven. <laughs> like Harps are known for being large instruments that you have to lean on you. Do they have like a children's version or something? Not per se, but there are actually small versions. So the big ones you would usually use with, say, an orchestra or professionally with classical music. And then there are what are called folk harps that come in all different sizes, as small as one that fits on your lap or just much, much smaller. And I started on a harp that was meant to be a lap harp, but I leaned it against me as a tiny child. <laughs> I still like the imagery of you having a full-blown harp and being seven and like holding it up. I still think that's pretty funny. <laughs> All right, so you did that, and then how, what was your first exposure into make art in general? Like, were you painting, drawing? Like, how did you get started with that? If you asked me in kindergarten what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would have said an artist. So I've always been interested in art, always enjoyed making art in my free time since I was a little kid. I went to Pius High School in Milwaukee, which has a great art program. And I did a lot of work in that program and, and really got interested in it more seriously and, and discovered the subject matter and the mediums that I was interested in. Just a very fantastic art program. And then I went to college thinking I was going to do painting. I went to the Maryland Institute College of Art for a year. It was not for me, so I transferred back to UW-Madison. I think I needed a liberal arts education and was not getting that there. And I really enjoyed some of my classes, but other ones just were not doing it for me. Yeah. Um, 
and I didn't like living in Baltimore. <laughs> For me personally, just, yeah. <laughs> so then in my time as an undergraduate, I, I kind of was all over the place, and I'm still very interested in just learning different techniques in media. So I did um, woodworking, screen printing, sculpture. When I went to MICA, I thought I might study fibers instead of painting because I took some fibers classes and they were really interesting. And currently I do uh, mixed media art with paint, uh, charcoal, collaging, mostly because I don't have the facilities to do silk screening or woodworking so much anymore. Mixed media is very different than screen printing. So why did you go that route? I guess, as I said, I've, I've just always been interested in in any and every media and at least trying it out and learning it. So I don't see it as a setback. I still do a bit of printmaking, um, lino cut printmaking. So there's still work that I can do with what I have in my home. I think I just, I seized the opportunity at the time in school and I took two semesters of it and really enjoyed learning it, but not necessarily needing to to do that as my primary medium, but just kind of tucking it away in my arsenal of things I've tried that I can kind of put together. Yeah, I, yeah. You can pull that out whenever you want. I absolutely yeah. get that. You've done some painting as well that I've seen in the, with the mixed media. You've been painting on the media items, which I have a love-hate fascination with different textures. Seeing a skull somehow like especially the the inside the nose when you see it and all that all those ridges and extra layers were like there's a weird little bone flap there yes. those freak me out but i can't stop looking at them and you drew skulls on top of or you painted skulls or actually i don't know how you put them on there but there's like skulls on seashells yes. which like is i'm looking at that and it's like tenfold for like textural stuff going on in my eyes. So how did you go to that particular style? So you're talking about my most recent body of work. It has a lot of bones and I use real natural objects like shells, flower petals, um, leaves. So I guess I've always just really enjoyed collecting natural items and I love Georgia O'Keeffe which seems really cliche but I love her bone pieces and so I started collecting skulls and things for still lives I guess like even since I was a teenager there have been some common themes in my work shells and nature textures and kind of the concept of looking through something into something else. Mm -hmm. So I like that about skulls, that there's all these holes and things that you can look through. When I was in high school, I did a piece that was looking inside a sand dollar very close up, which kind of looks like bone and stuff. It almost looks like a little cave inside. And shells. I mean, yeah. you said you grew up around Milwaukee. Oh, yeah. So how, not, not a lot of shells around Milwaukee. So how do you find these things? Yeah, I would say one of my greatest joys in life is beach combing. When I travel, little else makes me feel so calm and happy. I just love just walking along the beach and looking for interesting stuff. Okay. I could do it for hours until like my neck breaks <laughs> from like stooping oh, wow. over. So I've been collecting shells for years from different places I've visited. And this past summer I visited a friend in Boston and we went to Crane Beach and I did a lot of beach combing there and, and found some shells and we were just kind of adventuring around and like stopping at little towns for fun. And we went to some little store and, and there were shells that were someone had painted on. And my friend pointed that out. I wouldn't have even noticed and didn't really think about it at the time. But then when I got home and I had all these objects and I'm looking at what I can do with them, I was like, oh, I could paint on it. So that's how that evolved. I think actually what started my current series, I have a piece that's like a bell jar with found objects inside that I have. There's like a feather and a shell and some kind of dried sea plant. Um, and and it's, it's bright blue. I love like cabinet of curiosities type things. So I think that's kind of what started off the series was just starting to play with still lives with objects that I've collected. I'll do a lot of like 
kind of quick sketches in like ink and charcoal of still lives, bones, shells, and things like that. And they're not finished pieces. They're just kind of studies. And then I'll let them kind of sit around. And several of the pieces in my exhibit were, they started like that. And then after doing other work, I was able to go back to them and add to them and finish them. When did you start displaying them? Like actually going, I'm going to get these out there. Or were you already actively putting work out in galleries? When did that start happening? I actually had not shown my work in a very long time. So I I had a show in 2018, which was kind of just like getting back into things. I went through a long period where I wasn't, I wasn't making art. I was really struggling with it and just not feeling like what I was doing had value or like what's the point kind of a thing. Um, So I went through a really long slump and I guess maybe 2016, 17, 18, I started, I started doing more and more. And so I had a, I had a show in 2018 and it was really motivating to me to have been able to put together this body of work and that people came and saw it. And what was the thing that kickstarted it? I guess being in a better place with mental health. (laughs) Yeah. That I was able to set aside the feeling that it didn't matter or wasn't worth doing or wasn't good enough. Just getting to a place where I could, I could set those feelings aside and just, just let myself go and make mistakes and experiment and not have everything be amazing or finished piece. And yeah, just keep going until something came out of it to have that motivation again. Then um, after that show in 2018, I just, it was really motivating. I was really energized. And so I made, I made this, this body of work that's currently on display in, in the year after that. How did you even decide where did you show, ask several people or how did that go about it? So part of my job is that I run rotating exhibits. Mm -hmm. And so from, from running that program, I know that, spaces to show your work in town are are limited and I'm actually booked out several years um for my exhibits yes I'm I'm almost full on a list for 2022 wow. so I knew that if I wanted to start showing my work I needed to look around for places and just start applying because I probably wasn't going to get it like the month after or something I just looked around for different places or I remembered places where I'd seen other people's shows and called and found out who to contact and just started asking around for places that displayed work and got on their schedule for a year plus out and and that was motivating too that I had a deadline and but I still had a lot of time to work on getting a show together more of the show after this break Okay, so you're doing harp and painting and drawing and then mixed media. Clearly, you're always like, you're interested in many things. What What are some of the things that you still haven't learned or would like to learn and you think would really make your work benefit from knowing more about it? One of my goals is that I want to start working really big, which I have not done since I was a teenager because really? I've been doing some smaller work and... It's really fun to work big. Are you saying you want to do giant prints? You want to do murals? Maybe like, I don't know, something like four or five feet tall or something like that. Like really big piece of paper. Okay. And I've got some ready for me for when I'm ready to do it. Yeah. (laughs) For some reason, it's intimidating to start a big piece, I guess. Like the big paper. and I mean, I shouldn't be because the way I work is I... I do all these layers and it's really forgiving. So I shouldn't think that, you know, if I mess up, it wrecks the giant piece of paper or something. But I wonder if it's you pick that size because you used to work in a dining room table. That seems about that size. (laughs) Yes, it is about the size of a dining room table. Um, Yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't have a specific image in mind, but definitely continuing to explore the themes and ideas that I've been interested in lately. I'm still interested in them. There's still things to explore and discover with, yeah. with my current themes. So okay. probably just a continuation of that. The painting that you do, what type of painting is it? I was looking at it and it's like, sometimes I'm going, is it acrylic or is it watercolor or is it both? To be honest, I, I don't really have a preference. I use acrylic. I use watercolor. I use gouache. What's that? It's a uh, water media but it is it, it it's similar to watercolor but more opaque. 
and you can layer it more. You know, it's more transparent, and once it's down, you can't really do anything with it, but with the gouache, you can, if you get it wet again, you can still manipulate it, and yeah. and yeah, it's, it's, it, it's um, fluid like watercolor, but more opaque like acrylic, I guess, kind of like a, a in between the two. And with my painting, I really am truly just picking it based on what colors I have in which type. Like, oh, okay. maybe I need a neon yellow and I've got that in acrylic, or maybe I need like a really rich red and I have that in gouache. And I'll water down acrylic to act like watercolor if nice. I want to. Yeah, it's really like what color or texture I need. What are you currently working on right now? I don't know if this is going to go anywhere or not, but I've always been interested in domestic architecture. So just like, I don't know, looking at old houses, oh, okay. um, if that's the right word for it. And I don't, I, I don't have any education about architecture or anything, but I just really love looking at older buildings and older houses where people put a lot of thought and detail into it. And there's there's beautiful decorative aspects. It wasn't just like thrown together to make money like mm -hmm. a lot of buildings are today. And it and it holds up. So, you know, beautiful staircases and fireplaces and things like that. So for fun, I just love looking at like old house listings online and things like that. And just yeah. like looking at cool, like, oh, whoa, look at in here. They have this really cool third floor attic or, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, look at that fireplace. So anyway, I've been doing a lot of that and... As I'm going through the pictures, just the real estate pictures, sometimes there's really artistically taken ones. So I've been kind of saving them and I might start painting off of those. Yeah. And I mentioned that I like doing the concept of like looking through something at something else. So maybe I'll start layering them into things. Okay. That's where I'm going currently. Oh, I like that. <laughs> and maybe I don't go that way. So don't expect to see that necessarily, but no, that's really cool. And I get that. I, I should have guessed that when you said that you live in a Cape Cod, ah, it's yes. like, clearly, you know, <laughs> you know, the descriptions of houses. <laughs> how do you keep the, how do you store the pictures that you're using? I take screenshots. I mean, nothing that fancy. I also, for reference materials, I have lots of books. I love looking in like the little free libraries or going to old yeah. book sales and getting like weird old cookbooks with disgusting looking food that's bright green or oh, yeah. like... Why did they take pictures know. of the food? It never turned out well. Yeah, or like old interior design. And so I just keep uh, old National Geographics. I have like a, an old book of wildlife illustration. So I just love collecting these old books and I'll use them for reference or I'll cut them up for collaging too. I have at home one of those giant green plastic box Betty Crocker recipe boxes. Do you, are you familiar with those? Okay. <laughs> so this was more of a seventies thing. Okay. Like my mom had one each month. They would send you like, here are recipe cards for fondue the little ones and they would have like a disgusting 70s pictures of the food on there yeah i have a whole box of those I, I guess your motion was like a big box so that i'm very familiar with the little ones yeah side note apparently the home not printed ones but like you know say someone's grandma had written them all down or something and you find mm. it in a thrift shop like those are valuable really? people look for those yeah okay. <laughs> i think i actually have a few of them in there uh. Interesting. How did you get on the board of the Dane Art? Is it because of your curating or? Yeah. So I've been a panelist for the grant reviews. So I'm not on the board, but it's a yeah panel. For grant reviews? Yes. Yes. Wow. For Dane Arts. And yes, it was because of my position as art coordinator for UW Health. I think they just look for a variety of people that work a lot with art and are connected to the arts community to just have a variety of people on the panel because grants are a new thing to me and i still don't really understand them but i understand them more than when i first started hearing about them like dumb story the first time i ever heard about a grant was in the michael keaton version of batman was when they were going through there's a scene where they're going through the gallery and they were joking didn't know that michael keaton was standing behind them the journalist is like maybe i could get him to sign me a grant or something like that and then in passing when he walked and they realized he was there and he's like oh and get this guy a grant and he walks away and i remember going what the hell is a grant <laughs> 
and why does he want one so much? And then that was the extent for years and years. And then finally, again, when I started interviewing people, they started talking about grants and I had to finally start asking. So that's why whenever I know somebody that says grant, it's like enlighten me a little bit more. I've never written one myself and I know, and I hope that doesn't like disqualify me (laughs) from the panel, but I've read a lot of them. And so I understand what makes a good one and what doesn't and what's really what really grabs your attention and what doesn't the more planning and detail that are just set in place in in a grant it's not risky it shows that they've they've got everything laid out um whether they're an established institution or somebody applying for the first time if they've got like all their ducks in a row all their details laid out in the grant it and and have other sources of support like whether it be donated time or, or supplies or other financial support, that's really strong. But I really admire anyone who writes one, regardless of if it's funded or not, because it's really hard. It yeah. is a lot of thought and writing and planning and getting people to write letters of recommendation, and it, a lot goes into it. Yeah. I respect that. So you funded your own work just by the your job, like your job funds your work, or are you actually making money doing artwork now these days? I have sold some pieces from these last two shows, oh, awesome. which is wonderful. Um, yeah. I'm completely floored by that, and mm. just so appreciative, and and it's so motivating to me. Um, yeah. I I'm happy for any sales or just anyone even seeing it, but I mean I'm just doing it for me not to make a living off of it at at this time. What do you want to do going forward now that you've actually got the momentum back again and you're putting this stuff out there? What, what are your hopes for what you're doing artistically? I hope that I can stay in this, this really open mindset that I just do things until something sticks, experiment and learn from every piece I make, even if it's not like a piece I'm going to put in a show, keep myself open to inspiration and continue to collect inspiration. So I just want to keep making work regularly. And I would love to display my work in other places. I would love to apply to have some sort of gallery show. I think those are my overall goals. What are some of the places that you're going to have coming up after the Fair Trade Month? I am going to be showing at uh, You Frame It on the east side early summer of this year. And I am hoping to actually have a piece or two maybe in the Lakeview Vet Clinic. I don't know if you've been in there, but they... They have awesome art. They show art by local artists. I mean, I don't like going there with my dog if something's bad, but I love seeing the art there. It's incredible. I've been to an opening for their art, and it's so cool that this business that you wouldn't think would have anything to do with art has integrated it into their space and and connected with the community through it. By mid-March, one of my major projects for UW Health right now is that we are remodeling a unit in the university hospital. It's our new burn unit. So I've been working a lot on that project to integrate art into the unit. So that's it'll be a major project done. I'm very proud of it. You find people for those projects. So there are artists that have work in the collection that... I'm familiar with because of that. Maybe it was purchased from them before I started and I've seen their work. I get introduced to a lot of artists and see their work through the exhibits, through the rotating exhibits. So we'll have big group shows or individuals. And I'm I'm always kind of bookmarking people's websites or making note of potential people to use for future projects, thinking about like, oh, this person's a muralist and I don't have anything now, but then in the future, I know exactly who to talk to. I love this because you're on both sides of it. It's like, I want to ask you about your art, but at the same time, it's like, oh, but you have so much exposure to other things. This is really cool. So where where do you get your skulls and bones? I do want to know this. Well, I wanted to start doing some work with that. So I told you I I really like George O'Keefe's um, work with bones and things. And I had been to Arizona um, a couple years ago and was extra inspired by, I know she, she wasn't from there, but Georgia keeps working like just the Southwest and like the, 
the imagery of like the skulls that's really part of the southwestern kind of look so i was like oh i need to get some of those for still lives and and making art and so i looked on craigslist all the time you're looking on craigslist for skulls Uh yeah because those are the people you want to go meet up okay well yeah (laughs) so um yeah so i was looking and looking and looking and looking and there would be some really cool ones sometimes but it'd be like way crazy overpriced i'm just like waiting and then i saw this post that someone was giving away or not giving away selling it was like two deer skulls a squirrel and i think like a calf and it was like not expensive but it was out in the middle of nowhere um so i i asked if i could come and i always try to be safe with online stuff so i told my husband like i'm gonna tell you when i get there and everything and it's like way out in the middle of nowhere and i'm starting to lose reception and there's this like long driveway into this house in the middle of nowhere but it was like a nice family that lived there and they were like eating their dinner outside at a picnic table and it was all nice and everything and I got them and went home but since then I still uh, look on Craigslist a lot and just now that I've started doing this work and talking to people about it uh, if you put out into the world that you need bones they will come to you (laughs) so people have given me I I have heard that's an old saying yes 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 definitely it's true yeah so people have been giving me things here and there or uh, lending me interesting items like uh, right now I I'm borrowing a fossilized trilobite and a seal skull. How do you borrow those for art? You have to give them back when they're yeah. done? Yeah. So I'm using them oh. like for a still life. I'm not like painting oh, on them. Yeah. Okay. For like reference. and. So I feel like that should be a reality show, the, like the skull tracker or something like that. And they should follow you around and you go to like different. Seriously, pitch that to somebody. I, I would watch that. You go on Craigslist. It would be the, oh, the thing is, is for the show, they'd make you find the weirdest places to get them whatsoever. So it probably would get actually scary, yeah. but that's what would make it good television. Some of the postings like once in a while look really questionable like there's this one that's always up and i'm sorry if this person hears that but it just is like you can't call you just have to show up and it's like they've got a whole bunch of like horse skulls or something i don't know it just sounds like really but that makes it sound like they want you to surprise them yeah i don't know it's something like that but i guess that makes it so you know one of those like you were trespassing and then that's why they decided to fire buckshot at you i don't Uh, see i'm telling you the show writes itself no you're you're gonna be fine i shouldn't bring up scenarios like that when you're actively (laughs) trying to do this in the world still though that would be an interesting show and you should always keep that in the back of your mind so if you ever decide you want to try another medium and go to school for it go for television production and that will be your thesis thank you for that tip (laughs) to learn more about mandy you can follow her on instagram at atbkart the music for this episode is from the song just in case by my band lorenzo's music at lorenzosmusic.com and if you're not already you can subscribe to this podcast at my website tomrayswebsite.com or just look for Tom Ray's Art Podcast on Spotify or wherever else you get your podcasts. I'll be back next week with another episode. So until then, so long. Mm-hmm.